Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be doing, I don't want to call it analysis. What we're going to do is we're going to take a good, uh, we're going to take a quick look at Geo Group. Because even guys who I regard as excellent investors sometimes make decisions that baffle me. Now, I looked at some of the underlying fundamentals really quick. Like I said, we're not, I'm going to give you a price target in here, but I mean, this isn't supposed to be like a definitive look at whether you should buy Geo Group, but I found this interesting. Michael Burry sold everything but this one stock. Michael Burry's SEC F13 filings for the June quarter reveal that he sold his entire portfolio <clears throat> except Geo Group. And I'm telling you, the thing about Michael Burry is Michael Burry is always early to the game. You have to understand that about him. He's, he was far out in front of the housing crisis. There was a lot of people that called it. He wasn't the only one. But I'm just saying he was about three years early when he did that. I don't recommend selling your portfolio. To me, you're just trying to time the market. But I do believe Michael Burry's sentiment is right in that we're headed for a massive market correction. And a lot of these YouTubers who don't know anything are going to be shocked when they see a real, real bear market. Not one that lasts for a couple of months, but one that lasts for a year, year and a half. And then stocks trade sideways for a while. They trade at about fair value. And you're looking at 10, 15 years of stocks basically doing nothing. And that's how every irrational bull market works. But, I mean, if we come over here and we look at it, I mean... Come down. It's EPS. It's pretty standard. Like it, it's not really showing much growth in it. So, I mean, let's go and look at the price to earnings ratio. Because what you're paying for is growth. Even though 15 is considered the fair uh, market multiple, 15 to 16. I'm just going to tell you right now, you're pay you're overpaying if you're buying Geo Group. If, if, if you want to go by looking at, and a good way to do your EPS, for me, what I do is I'll take the average of years, but in this case, I wouldn't. This is the reason. So if I see a bunch of like, it's a dollar fifty three in EPS, and then I see the next year it's eight dollars. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use averages on that because to me I just look at it as a disproportionate year, and if I use that, I'm going to overpay. But I mean, basically, what you're paying for, I don't know what is going on with Geo Group, why it's EPS dropped. I don't really care because I'm not that I'm not interested in this stock. But when you're looking at this, I don't know why this happened. That's something you're going to have to figure out. Michael Burry is calling this a classic cigar butt scenario. If you don't know what that is, it's a it's a hypothesis in picking stocks where if you buy a company below what it's uh, plant property and equipment, it's intellectual property, all that, if you buy below that market cap, you, got, you get a cigar puff from it. That's all that is. Um, how much stock I put in that? Not a lot because the reason is, is the future is inherently unpredictable. And if I could predict what a stock was going to do, I'd be the richest man on the planet. Come over here. I mean, it's trading right around its shareholder equity. 
I guess. I'm not really going to criticize Michael Burry too much solely because the guy is more knowledgeable than I am. I'm just simply, as your average dude who's into this stuff, kind of trying to understand what he's seeing. And again, if we come over here and we look at the cash flows, like you're not really paying for growth here. You're not really getting any growth. when you're If you're paying a price to earnings ratio of 15, you're actually paying for some level of growth depending on how you calculate it. I use a 12.5% discount rate, but in order to justify that, even my 12.5% discount rate is telling me that you need about 11% growth per year to justify paying a 15 price to earnings ratio for your stock. So if you're in here and you're looking at this, because this is what, when I first look at a stock to see if I'm interested, and look, everybody's got their own method. If you got a different method, that's fine. Share it in the comment section. I don't care. I'm here to learn. I don't in any way pretend to be the most knowledgeable person on this stuff, but you know, I have my background. I can get you to the dance, but it's like, if somebody has another explanation, I'm all ears. But I mean, when you come and you look at this, I mean, you tell me if you're watching this video at home, it, are, are you, what are you paying for here? So, I mean, if you would have bought here and I'm just using this as an example, I don't know what geo group's going to do in the future, but I can look to its past for some level of what I expect it to do. And in here, you're really just not paying for growth. You're really just paying for a constant cash flow. Yes, I'm aware that it went up massively here. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so they're not, there's their cash from operations, their capital expenditures, 55 million, and then there's your underlying cash flow. I don't know what they're spending their cash from operations on in here. But when I was looking over here, what did I find that was interesting? I'm using the stock analyzer over here. I found, I forget what I found that was interesting. Oh, it was their cash burn. That's what I was looking at. I don't remember where it was that I was looking, but I found something that was pretty interesting. I wouldn't use a discounted cash flow using this, uh, by the way, because, I mean, if you come over here, and this could be updated more, but there you go. There's its EPS. So I don't want you to make the mistake. This must be... I it's cash flow per share. So I don't use that to calculate intrinsic value when I'm using a when I'm using a discounted cash flow. I use EPS or if I didn't, I would use actual cash flow. Not cash flow per share. That's just me. Um and it's just the way I do it. I'm not saying that way is wrong. But I forget what I was looking at. I was probably looking at the statement of cash flows, honestly. But uh, when I was looking at it, I looked at their cash burn and it didn't seem to be something that I liked. But I mean, this is just one of the things about investing is you're not... Is, no matter how good you think somebody is, you're not always going to agree with them. And I actually don't agree with him on this stock. But I mean, if we look at the five year average free cash flow, we'll use a terminal multiple of 20. I mean, that would tell you that this company is massively overvalued, undervalued. But what I'm saying is when you're using your multiple here, Look at what your growth you're getting. You're not getting any growth out of this company. And in my opinion, 
A 15 price to earnings ratio is too high of a multiple to pay for this. Let's mess around with everything. EMs, I could do this in my cash flow, but since this is here, let's just go with one, two, three percent. And we're doing a 10 year. So if you're looking at those numbers, it's too low. Is it though? Let's do three, five, and we'll just do six. Uh, free cash flow margin. We'll just keep that at 10. Because this is, look, everything money, I don't think, did a good explanation of telling you what a cash flow is for. And I'm also one of those people that probably didn't explain it as well as I should have. So I'm trying to explain it now in my videos. This, when you're calculating intrinsic value, take it with a grain of salt. In my opinion, what you really need to pay attention to are your terminal multiples, whether you're using cash flow or EPS, because what you want to do is when I run my cash flow initially, the first time you run one, what you want to do is just get a general idea of where you think a stock would be at. So there you go. Assuming these numbers, Geo Group is actually undervalued by about half. And normally, this would lure me into a stock. I go, okay, I got to do more research on it. But again, I, I just, I look at this and I go, okay, maybe this is a great buy, but I'm just not seeing. It. Maybe if I could buy it somewhere around here, and I all, honestly, I don't, if I bought this somewhere around there, yeah, I'm happy to sit on this and collect a dividend while it, I wait for it to go back up. I'm happy to do that. But right now, currently, this is just too much, in my opinion, for the growth that you're paying for. Again, we can look at cash flows or we can look at earnings per share. And I mean, look, it is what it is, but you're not really getting any growth out of this company. So I don't know why you would buy it. I, I just thought it was interesting to look at. And I, I really, maybe he thinks he can get more out of it. Maybe he thinks the, 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 the revenue will go up. Maybe he knows way more about the private prison industry than I know. But I mean, just looking at this stock right now, even though the stock analyzer tool has some conservative numbers in there, I just still don't see it. Um, let's see what that makes a difference. Not really, didn't really do anything. That's why I don't use this other stuff in here. That's why I just use EPS because it really, you know, if I go and I plug it into my sheet, it'll tell me about the exact same thing. So what are my final thoughts on Geo Group? I mean, again, take it with a grain of salt. I didn't do a whole lot of research besides quickly look at a few things, but I'm just not really interested. If my cash flows were staying constant, even if they were about, and again, when, cash flows fluctuate like this, it makes it harder to calculate an intrinsic value. So when cash flows are fluctuating like this, what, if, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna come over here and look at the price to earnings ratio initially. And then if it interests me, I'll go in and start looking at the financial statements and reading the uh, 10K, to try and figure out if I can guess where this is going. But right here with the growth, you're already overpaying, in my opinion. Right around here, yeah, why don't you snatch some of that up because uh, a lot of the uh, risk is actually baked out of it. So anyways, I hope this helps. And if it did, go ahead, give me a like and subscribe or don't, and I'm out.